It's the time for mm, Pick It From China. <laughs> Ooh. Welcome back to the channel guys. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at this G5, the game player, or called the G5 game box. And oh man, on AliExpress, it's an invasion of these things. And I can't help myself keep buying them because I just want to review them all. Uh, yeah, reviewing them all is going to be like an issue because there are like many of these and sometimes I need to skip them because when I want to click on them to buy, they're already sold out because they're cranking out so many of these things. So, but what's interesting with this, so this thing is made like in game box, it says like the name, you can use it like in game player or in handheld, but also you can use it like in game system. So what you're going to do is you can use this thing with a micro USB and a five volt charger and basically charge it. And then we have an EV out. This is going to be the barrel jack, the tiny version. One is going to be old school. <laughs> this is going to be old school EV out. The yellow one for the display. And of course for the screen or the image. And then we're going to do the red for the audio. Another thing is like, this thing is pretty cool because it also comes with a controller. But the downside to this is that only having one micro USB. Yeah, seriously. So you need to charge or you need to use a controller. The controller itself, mm, don't exactly what to think about it, to be honest. And yeah, the other thing is like the weird thing. This is so far I know only for player two. So if you want to use a combination, like say you want to use this thing like a game device, plug it in and just want to play some games, that is not possible so far I know. But yeah. There's always something they need to mess up. Ha! There it is. I was always afraid they were going to give me like a toilet paper manual that explains or directions for use. Mandel G5. Okay, let's see how I open up this freaking thing. Ah, there it is. So here it says like a quick overview what you're going to get and that's it. And here are some instructions. Battery usage, battery usage, maintenance and special precautions. Ooh. But let's take a close look at the device itself, because I'm interested. Is this thing even worth picking up? It looks kind of weird, but and kind of bulky. Yeah, what are we going to get with this thing? So when you're looking at all the great game devices I've reviewed, most of them are the same. But this one comes with a particular interesting thing. Look at the D-pad. Or, it's not really a D-pad, it's more like a round button that you can use like a D-pad. Okay, so the G5 game player that also can be used as a game console. We are going to get a volume control. At the top, we're going to get the micro USB port. Already so told you there's only one of them. It would be great if you have one for the controller and another one for charging, but okay. Then we're going to get AV out, the on and off switch. The system itself, it's quite an interesting design. You can see like, it's not like the same kind of shell. Like basically it looks like two different shells that have been put together. At the bottom, we can slide out this part and then we're going to get the famous Nokia battery, the BL5C, that this time is 1020 milliamp. What I do like about these things, these things are like, you can get yourself a bigger one. They are dirty cheap and of course you can bring a couple of them with you if you want to have like a lot of gameplay time. So, and overall it will give you like a couple of hours, so that will not be the issue at all. Okay, so let's take a close look at the design because this D-pad, I don't know if it's going to be actually playing well. Reset button. A, B, X, Y, but most of the time this is A, B, and then we're going to get turbo buttons and the select start. So let's boot it up and let's see what we're going to get. And they're still using this freaking song of the final fight. Ah! All right, so let's take a close look at this. So the English, that's what we're going to choose, of course, otherwise I have no idea what it says. Okay, well, when you're looking at the list itself, the list is similar to another device I've reviewed a very long time ago, but the list 500 games, it's just a freaking lie. Like they always put double games, and they mix that up with some homebrew. Birdwick is one of these great examples. UFO Race, we have seen it before on NES clones. So there's nothing really special with that. So when it comes to the game list, it's the same crap all over again. And with crap, I mean like a lot of things they do with previous handhelds and they keep doing, seems to be. So when you're going to get to the last part of the list, you will see the same stuff. Sometimes you're going to be on a different name, stuff like that. They did it, by the way, in back in the 90s already, and they're still doing it now. So don't get confused with all the saying, oh, we're having so many games, because most of the time, it's just a lie. Okay, so the first thing I'm noticing when you're looking at the display, this is what you're going to get with a lot of these cheap devices. Like, look at this, like the view angle is sometimes really damn bad. Okay, so let's play a game. 
Oh, this is going to be challenging. Okay, so these are basically the B buttons or the A. And these are the turbo buttons, okay. You really see like there's some weird thing going on because I cannot really navigate the character because it's the weird D-pad. See, I wanted to like press up and it started walking. Stuff like that happens. Okay, you stop freaking showing some of these freaking shurikens to me. So yeah, when it comes to the controls and the D-pad, oh boy. It looks maybe kind of weird and maybe fancy, but it is freaking awful. And when it comes to homebrew games, this is a great example. Mortal Kombat 4. Mortal Kombat! Why does a bloody thing doesn't start? Oh, we need to press a different button. I swear it says press start. Okay, what the hell is going on? What? Eh? Okay, it seems to be like it's my D-pad all messed up or what? Yeah! <laughs> Look at this, my D-pad is messed up! <laughs> I have never seen this before, like that they completely messed everything up, like my... What happened to my start? Oh boy, this is really bad, like bad at the bad, like... How can you mess up the freaking controls on this thing? Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. Alright, so, next up. And of course we have a shitload of screen tearing, like it always will be with these cheap handhelds, or most of them. Oh boy, I really hate the, I really hate the control configuration of the thing, and you cannot change it out. Okay, so a great game to test the D-pad is with Spad and X, just to see how it works out. Okay, we're going to a remote now. So the turbo configuration is really convenient now. So when you're playing this game, like the D-pad is working okay. Oh, don't think so. I can do this all freaking day. Oh no, I can't because I have a timer. I think when you get used to the D-pad, it is actually not that bad. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I want to go to the end boss, I want to go to the end boss. Oh, for fuck's sake, go away. Turbo mode! Yeah! Okay, so next up, let's try the AVR port. And when you're pressing the buttons on the controller, you cannot navigate through the menu, so actually this is player 2. So it's quite a neat feature, but the only thing I don't like is look at the image. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it is really bad, like... It's all washed out. The AV out signal is really bad on the G5 game box handheld whatever thing. Okay, so let's see if the two player mode is actually working. I don't know what's going on with the D-pad, but you can see like it's all freaking messed up. Of course, this needs to be working just fine. So the idea behind it is pretty cool, but like this D-pad is so freaking awful, forget about it. Alright guys, so when it comes to the second controller, it's horrible. I'm more like, dude, how can you mess it up? The form factor is not bad, like it feels quite comfortable to play. Normal buttons, like rubbery select the start, but it does all the thing like, okay, but you can feel like there is something all going on. Like it feels quite sturdy when I'm pressing to the right. So this is like real low quality. I know I like for the money, normally you can't complain, but actually I'm more like, don't send me like a second extra controller. Because it's pointless, the system itself, quite disappointed with the AV out. Okay, so there's only one thing to do now, it's like a rip and tear situation. So that's what we're going to do, we're going to do a quick teardown, just to see how this thing looks in the inside. I really love to do these teardowns. So when it comes to the quality of the emulation, it's the same story with a lot of these like cheap handhelds. Take consideration, is that they are like really cheap to the cheap cheap, and, and overall it's going to be not great. And that's what you're going to see. Screen tearing. The audio quality was not super bad because most of the antennas also have the issue of the audio. I don't know what's going on with this. Is there a screw in here or what is it? There is an hole, but there is no screw. No, there is no screw at all. Okay, that is weird. Did I got them all? No, I didn't get them all. We get there is a screw on your screwdriver. That's the last one that we need to open up. Just to see what is inside, what is inside. Let's remove the battery. 
And let's see if we can click it open. There are some. Oh, there is a screw here. Oh, we're going to get an hidden screw. Mm -mm, you naughty Chinese. Try to fool the wicked. Okay, so this is the top piece of plastic. Very thick. Hard plastic. The yeah, on-off switch. Don't need to lose that one. Otherwise, I have a problem. Okay, so let's put all of these screws together. Then we're going to get the main PCB. Kind of interesting one. Like This is like... In it's more like in glossy at the back, so it's something you don't see very often. All right, so let's remove this single parker. Yep, it is. And this is what you're going to get in the inside. Then we're going to get the display itself. All right. So they are using a combination of different kind of rubbers when you're looking at this. Here we're going to get the transparent membrane over there, and then we're going to get the other membranes these are like a weird combination you can see like here we're going to get actually like a better close-up view of the let's say deep head what it needs to be it's like a round button with basically four separate membranes like the good ones let's take a close look at the main board itself okay so it's of course like an that's on the chip here we're going to get the chip itself they didn't stand it off they did so these are some weird thing on it so you cannot really read what kind of chip it is we're going to get the LCD, then of course we're going to get the black blob, the micro switch here for the reset. But it's interesting when you're looking at both of the contacts over here, here you can see they put something in the middle to give it more like a D-pad feeling, otherwise it feels like you don't have a metal point of the D-pad. So when you're looking at this, it's quite interesting and of course made very cheap. But here you can see the date of production says 2021, so it is quite a new piece of technology. That was also like the question, when you're buying like a bit handheld, is it new or is it like old stock? So when you're looking at the G5 game box, I was quite disappointed. So for example, the controls are messed up, I have never seen it before to be honest. And the TVL function is pretty damn horrible. And I was using it on a freaking CRT. Normally you would say like, hey, it's the problem because you're using it on LCD. But this thing is like freaking awful in many ways. The D-pad is bad, or the D-pad-ish thing. That is just a button and overall like it's pretty horrible the same stuff like screen tearing the stuff that we've seen before that is just a typical thing what you get with these devices and then to top it off we're going to get a shitty controller yep that doesn't work at all yeah this thing needs to be like something with a smile looks like a face doesn't even matter it's pretty damn awful i want to thank you for watching consider subscribing hit the little bell become one of the wicked family and i will see you in the next video